Hello and welcome to part two of Movie Night's second annual yearly retrospective. Sorry, I was only able to make that opening rhyme for the first part. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. In part one, I shared my picks for the 10 best movies of the year. Tonight, I'll be awarding superlatives in nine special categories and announcing the three worst films of the year. Let's begin with the first of these superlatives. Comedy is one of the most subjective categories, but I'm awarding Spy the title of funniest movie of the year. Amy Schumer's work in Trainwreck was a very close second, but Paul Figg's excellent send-up of espionage movies mixed hilarious slapstick with great parody moments. Melissa McCarthy was wonderful as the bumbling hero, but the real highlight was Jason Statham as a cocksure ally who's much dumber than he realizes. With so many great examples, from the Steadicam boxing fight in Creed, to a winding walk through Tom Hardy's club in Legend, to the Day of the Dead opening sequence in Spectre, there were plenty of long takes in 2015 cinema. Even the less flashy ones, like a locked down conversation in Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, impressed. But when it comes to the one -er, this is Alejandro Gonzalez Inarratu's world, and we're all just living in it. I thought it'd be hard to top his award-winning work on Birdman, but there were huge swaths of The Revenant photographed in a single take, or at least they're carefully designed and edited to resemble one. The obvious highlight is Leonardo DiCaprio's central fight with a giant grizzly bear. This vicious attack is painful to watch, yet impossible to look away from, and it's all done in a single, minutes-long, fluid camera move. Although I still had a fun time with it, Spectre is my pick for most disappointing. After the monumental success of the previous James Bond picture, and one of the largest budgets in history, I was hoping for a more cohesive narrative and a better villain. The action was pretty great, but many other components dragged on or fell flat. I just hope this isn't Daniel Craig's final Bond movie. The most surprising film this year was No Escape. The last few Pierce Brosnan outings have been largely forgettable and straight to video, and with Owen Wilson in the lead, I didn't expect much from this third world thriller, but I was genuinely frightened for the characters throughout their harrowing ordeal. It didn't break enough new ground to make it onto my top 10 list, but for a simple chase story, it was unrelenting excitement. Always a contentious category, but I felt the horror picture It Follows was 2015's most overrated. A mysterious demon that manifests itself as a creepy, slow-walking human, constantly stalking its victim, that can only be transferred by sexual intercourse? It's an incredible premise, but ultimately I was more confused and amused during this 100-minute picture than actually frightened or entertained. Horror fans should definitely check it out, but I didn't fall in love with it like many others did. With imaginative visuals, a moving soundtrack from Michael Giacchino, and awesome action sequences, I was disappointed Tomorrowland didn't perform better, which is why it gets my pick for most underrated film of the year. While the ending needed some work, the premise and overall execution of this world-jumping narrative was brilliantly realized, and I definitely had a fun time with it. Junkie XL's gritty anthems were a perfect fit for Mad Max, while Ludwig Gorgensau's urban score for Creed was equally impressive. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Michael Giacchino's impressive year. Not only did he score Jurassic World and the aforementioned Tomorrowland, he also kept the haphazard Jupiter Ascending somewhat watchable, and really moved audiences with his playful and emotional themes for Inside Out. But it was John Powell's surprising work on Pan that gets my pick for Best Soundtrack of 2015. This was by no means a great film, but it's exciting and adventurous score, which blends deep strings, flutes, and flighty late motifs made it a very enjoyable experience for sure. And hearing the pirates and prisoners of Neverland sing chant a grungy version of Smells Like Teen Spirit was pretty cool as well. A film not nearly enough people heard about, let alone saw, is The Final Girls, which gets my pick for Most Overlooked of 2015. A tremendous blend of satire, emotion, and horror. The extremely awesome premise, five teens are transported inside a classic slasher film, combines some of the best elements of Last Action Hero with Friday the 13th, and even a bit of Home Alone. In an extremely unique adventure, the bright visuals and solid acting from a familiar group of smaller names make this a great time. I strongly recommend seeking this one out. As I've mentioned before, horror is not one of my favorite genres, but of the films I did see last year, Unfriended was the most effective. The fast-paced story of high schoolers being tormented by a mysterious supernatural force is shown entirely via screen capture. Besides some gimmicky jump scare moments, this is a captivating melodrama with some apt lessons on bullying. But any movie that gets me nervous and frightened over something as simple as a mouse click has to have my pick for scariest movie of the year. And now for the worst movies of 2015. I didn't even care for the first installment that much, but The Maze Runner The Scorch Trials takes awful to a whole other level, and it's my pick for the third worst movie of the year. 
The bare bones plot is just one long, dumb chase scene populated with stupid characters and tired cliches. The entire movie is a hurried mess of stolen ideas from better productions. Trite dialogue, bad acting, and a dumb concept sink this picture before it can get out of its own way. And perhaps most infuriatingly, it barely addresses any of the questions raised by its predecessor, and concludes with another annoying cliffhanger tease. Originally developed as Twilight fan fiction, the pathetic Fifty Shades of Grey was the second worst movie of 2015. Not only was the piss poor dialogue delivered without any charm or enthusiasm, the boring script practically insults the audience with an ignorant treatment of the BDSM culture. Despite its ample nudity, this watered down experience is a tame and uninteresting waste of time. The only people who might enjoy this wreck are 12 year olds who haven't discovered internet porn yet. Before I reveal my number one pick, some dishonorable mentions have to go to Paul Blart Mall Cop 2, Super Fast, and Hot Tub Time Machine 2, all of which exist in that pile of crap category called Who Actually Asked For This? But the absolute worst movie of the year has to be Joshua Trank's Fantastic Four Requel. Studio meddling and hatchet job rewrites ruined any potential this second-rate franchise might have had, but there's no excuse for the feckless acting, drab visuals, and clunky dialogue. An unimaginative and lazy picture that foolishly omits the best part of an origin story, Fant Four Stick is an unfortunate cinematic abortion, and the worst movie of 2015. That concludes my annual retrospective. Hopefully you enjoyed looking back at the best, worst, and most interesting movies of 2015. If you'd like to see what I thought about the other 65 or so new movies I watched last year, check out my letterbox page for additional reviews and ratings. That will do it for tonight's episode, but next week I'll be doing a special on Quentin Tarantino films, so leave your comment reviews below if you'd like to be involved. And don't forget to click this information icon to watch some related content. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. Thanks for watching and listening. Until next time, have a good movie night. Yeah.